Justice is equity and it knows no boundary. The litigants have genuine cause of action and George Fumi Asaulu is ever ready to dispense justice, ensuring amicable settlement. So how come she's not been paying this man out of the profit she's making? Well, yeah, it Explain it to her. It because as far as I'm concerned, that's an act of wickedness. Well, and she's trying to play smart. Well, that's the impression I'm having. She is fearless. Don't you ever, ever look at me straight in the eyes and say, wait. She is firm. I don't see I this see. man as somebody that will kill you. All he wants is for you to just perform conjugal rights. <laughs> I'm telling you. She is hilarious. The dispute is real and the judgment is binding. This is the Justice Court. Today on the Justice Court, the plaintiff, Mojisola Azan, has been solely responsible for the upbringing of the daughter from a marriage with Fami. Now, she wants the courts to compel her husband to take responsibility for their daughter's school fees. The defendant, Fami Umoru Azan, agrees to the responsibility but said it is not financially buoyant. All rise. Court in session. Honorable Judge Fumi Asaolu presiding. Please be seated. Your Honor, this case is between Mojisola Asan and Maru Asan. Parties one on oath. Thank you, Aki. You're welcome, I know you are married, legally married, from what I have before me. Yes. Traditionally, church wedding and um, registry wedding. Yes. You had. How long ago was that? When about did you get 13, married? About 13 years ago, 2001. When did you get married? 2001. 2001. Yes, sir. Can you tell me how you met and why you are in court? Um, I've been married since um, 2001. What do you do for a living? I'm an actor and a businesswoman. You're an actress? Yes. I'm How long have you been in that business? In the acting business? Yes. 12 years. 12 years. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you were already in acting business mm -hmm. before you met him or no. you went into Immediately it after? after the separation. After you met him. All right. Um, um, I'm a business What do you do man. for a living? I'm a businessman. What kind of business? I, I'm, I market. Uh, you have to speak louder. I market oil and gas, diesel to be specific. Diesel. How long have you been doing that? Uh, it's about uh, eight years now. Eight years ago. Yes. Can you tell me how you met him? Um, I used to work in a um, corporate industry back then, and then um, he used to work in the bank, and then we met, courted, dated, and got married. Okay. And you eventually got married? Yes, ma. Are you mama just <laughs> Are you I'm serious? Yes, ma. Are you? Yes, ma. Okay. All right. Because I've been trying to place that face. Okay. All right then. So you got married. And what happened thereafter? Um for how long way did you stay married together? Because I know you're living apart right now. Yes, so how we've been, long we've been living, living apart together? for over eleven years. Over eleven years. Yes. Okay. From your claim, you wrote there that you've been living apart for 13 years. Mm -hmm. Precisely. Precisely. Okay. So, I'm with you. Um, so, um, we had um, some basic issues in the marriage, um, some irreconcilable differences. Uh, <laughs> never say never. I always tell you that. Yes. So, when you say irreconcilable in marriage, I've seen marriages where people live apart for over 22 years. And at the end of the day, the whole day, they come together, you know. So in life, generally, that's my concern. Never say never over anything. Anyway, you had issues. Yes. You ended up living apart. Yes. Right. And? And um, we've been living apart How many for children do you have? Today? Just one daughter. One daughter. She's 16 right now. So she must have been about three years old when? She, she was. Is she in your custody or his own custody? She's in my custody. Okay, I'm listening. 
And then um, since then, I have been um, the sole custodian of the child, um, financially, emotionally, and physically. By choice, did you give him an opportunity to take part, or yes. you deprived him from having an opportunity to take part in taking care of the welfare of the baby? No. You I, did not? I you didn't, didn't deprive him from? No. All right. Okay. okay. And um, she's in SS3 now. And um, right now, I haven't worked this year because of the corona um, virus, and I haven't had any means of income, despite the fact that I have to do multiple jobs to be able to maintain a certain standard of living for myself and my child. And we haven't been able to work this year because we cannot practice social distance um, in my field. And my other source of income, too, we can't practice social distancing. What is the other source of income? Um, I'm a businesswoman. I'm into um, solars and inverters. Okay. I'm also into event, um, event planting and decoration, right. as well as emceeing events. I also do food, anything that will put food on the table for myself and my child. All right. Okay. And um, so the issue right now is that um, because she's in SS3, um, the school has refused to, normally we pay per term, you know, and the term, you know, that's like 350, 300, but because SS3, they cannot tell you, normally I break my payments and then sometimes they have to tell her to leave school, even though she's in the hostel, she'll go to the hostel. And then they said they cannot let us register for the exams and do anything right now because during YF, they cannot let the child go out. You have to pay up front the full three terms, which is a lot for me right That's now. because she's in the final year. Because she's in the final class. Okay. And they cannot let her to leave school as usual because sometimes when my payment is deferred, they tell her to leave, but she goes to the hostel and stays in the hostel. Okay. But they won't be able to tell her to do that this term um, because um, it's YF. Can I cut you short a while? Yes, please. Why are you living apart? What actually happened? The two of you are not saying anything. Okay, can I say something now? Yes. Okay, I thought you were still referring to her. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm addressing you to the other. Because I know all this is on about the welfare of the child and everything. Yes. But at the same time, I'm just looking at it. This is a matrimonial issue at the same it is. time. Yes. Because there are two things, like two in one. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you are still legally married to each other. Yes. No divorce. And you are living apart. And I know for the welfare of the child, it's always good when they parents are in good terms. Sure. I wouldn't really say living together, which is the best though, but at least when you are in good terms, you can always work together for the welfare of the children of the marriage. And at times to move forward, you need to know the basic, what actually caused the separation. So I'd love to know. Well, um, Basically, I think it's. I will not want to fault anyone. I want to fault the two of us. Okay. I want to fault the two of us because, um, like you said, marriage is, for, is uh, both sides. You know, um, I think what happened was um, on my side. I think I I, I kind of lost uh, a bit of trust. You know, and I couldn't deal with it. Though I wasn't that matured then. I was still a bit naive, you know, but I lost trust and that wasn't supposed to be. Trust in who? Or you did something to make her not trust you? Or no. you're saying no, you no, no. did something that I lost you trust in trust the marriage, her. I lost trust in her, I lost trust in everything. Why? I don't know, maybe uh like I said, I was naive. Um, so something you must have done something that when you look back on her, you now say, Oh, at the time I took that step or did what I did. Yes. I must have been naive that time. So what was it? Well, um, I'll say this. What I'm saying in simple mm. English is, what do you think you have done in the past mm. that probably make your marriage not to work? That maybe now you probably would have acted differently if in the same situation. I'm still going to ask her the same thing. Sure. Because... You need to balance that. Of course. Uh, we had love, yes. But at the time, um, things really got bad financially on my side. And, uh, what did you do for a living? 
then I was working in a bank, Intercontinental Bank, before at that time. the defunct Intercontinental Bank, yes. Okay. Yeah, so... That was at the time the two of you got married. You were working in the bank. Yes. Is that so? Immediately we got married, I, I left the bank. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, but things really got bad. You know, lost money in business and all of that. And at the same time, she was, though, she was trying to get things done. You know, but because I felt... Uh, yes, things done. You mean she was supporting financially? Is that what yeah, you she mean? was, of course. Okay. We, we support each other. That's how All we're right. doing, okay. you know. But at the time, things got bad. So I, I wasn't really concentrating on the marriage that seriously. You weren't concentrating on? On the marriage that seriously. Because okay. I felt um, one way or the other she was having issues behind, or stuff behind me, if you understand what I mean. You know, uh, trust, I lost trust. Yes, I lost trust. I felt really pressured because I, I was really going through a lot of um, financial issues then. Okay, so that made you to start thinking that way. I thought a lot. And now when you look back at it, you wish it was otherwise. Yes, that because she's my saying. best, she's my very good friend. We're still friends till tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, it's, it's, yes, I still look back and still pinch myself that maybe I would have done it a bit different then. Yeah. Okay. Can I have your own side? From all you have said, if I'm right, you still love her. Or you don't? She has my daughter. I love her, yes. I you love her. her. I love my daughter. Yeah, that's what I can pick from everything you have said. Yeah. So. Um, as I said, um, we had um, a lot of financial crisis. And then um, I think after the birth of the child, um, the pressure became a lot to a lot. shuttle um, father, child, and myself. And I just um, was under a lot of pressure basically and then um i was in the corporate industry then and then i um i left my job then to take care of my child and then after that um i couldn't go into the corporate industry and i went into entertainment so basically the income was not like regular it's not like a salary earning job so you can't say well at the end of this month you bring this to the table so uh, i was stuck between um funds always short of funds um to settle the home front and then take care of the child and then still support him basically. But that was still very okay by me because I thought marriage was um, for better or for worse. So, but you know, but when, um, when you now start having like um, cheating issues and then the child outside well love, and I know that you're not buoyant enough to handle this. You're we're still struggling with funds within the house, you know, and then you're still having like a child outside the marriage and then you cannot even talk to me about it to prepare me and then, you know, I have to hear from outside from the baby mama who just storms my house with a child. You know, that was a lot of trauma for me. And I just thought, you know what, I can't do this anymore. If I'm suffering with you for under the name of love and you're not faithful in this, then I don't see why I should, you know, stay in this and be boxed in. Let me just know that I'm alone and I'm, I'm hustling alone, basically. That was like what broke the camels back, basically. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. Will you consider that as having made a mistake in the past? Uh, of course. Um, having an um, um, extra relationship in a, in a marriage is wrong. I didn't hear you. Having a relationship outside the marriage is wrong. Okay. Yes, naturally, you know. Um, yes, I think it was wrong. Well, what's happened is happened. So do I apologize to her and everything? Because, like I said, I was driven, you know, by a lot of stuff, a lot of pressure. You know, I was. I, I wasn't feeling the same way I used to feel. I'm the kind of person that follows his heart, and I know when my heart is telling me something's wrong somewhere. And I really needed um, to be happy. Even if there's money or there's no money, I needed to be happy, you know, because I, I actually grew up without a mom. 
So I really needed someone as a companion, you know, notwithstanding the fact that there's no money or there's money. And you see, I had to bring this up. Okay. At times you have couples that have issues mm -hmm. and they can't even identify the problem. Or they are not ready to even accept that they've made or where they've made mistake in the past. But it's different here. I mean, whichever way, you know how she feels about that. Sure. And you are apologetic over it as well. Sure. And I'm glad that the two of you at the same time, you have the welfare of the child. That's the issue of the marriage. Yes. You have the issue, of, you have it at heart right now. So, go ahead. Um, so, basically, um, what I'm here is because um, I'm immersed in bills right now. And <laughs> I also have a health challenge at the moment. So every time um, I'm raising my funds for my surgery, I always have to remove money from it to still balance the school fees, you know. But um, unfortunately, in the last um, few months, um, my, my challenge, my health challenge, which is my back, has gone from um, manageable to a little bit worse. And my doctor is saying to me that I have to go ahead and have the surgery like almost immediately. But if I I don't know how to complete money for the surgery. I just have a little bit of it. But then I also still have the outstanding for the class. So I'm stuck between the devil and the red bull. Like, do I just think about my health first now and go ahead with this surgery? Then what happens to her? I mean, I couldn't have come all this way to now dump her in SS3. So, and I'm, so I'm reaching out to him and I'm like, what's going on? But he's like, okay, I'll get back to you. I'll get back to you. I'll get back to you. And the plaintiff, Mojisola Azan, is still legally married to her husband even though they parted ways 13 years ago after she discovered that her husband gave birth to a child outside of the marriage, despite not having money to support the marriage. The defendant, Fami Hazan, admitted it was not financially buoyant. He said it was young, naive and under a lot of pressure at that time. But now that Mujisola is immersed in lots of bills and also going through a health challenge, will Fami rise to the occasion? So how much is the school fees right now? How much do you want him to pay? How much are you requesting for him? Because yes, I have, let me have it. I have a copy of that that I've submitted. Okay. Well, let me have it from your phone. Now, what I have here, you have the total sum. Yes, I just told the school to print the, out. That's what the school gave you. <laughs> yes, from just so one. We, She's yeah. been in that school since just one to SS3. Okay, so the total sum, that's the total bill. Yes. It's 3 million, 829,000 Naira. That's what I've been paying. But you've cleared most of them. By God's grace. The only one outstanding that you want right now that's the for the i'm looking at the one for ss3 only and what i have here is seven hundred and fifty-four thousand. i haven't cleared that that's the one that is outstanding that has nothing to do with going to the university this is just one face off so what do you have to say to that uh, because let me explain yes now you have a bill this is from the school mm -hmm. And they've itemized how much he has paid so far. That's the total sum of three million eight hundred and twenty-nine. Yes. But you have an outstanding of seven fifty-four. That's the one that is giving her headache right now. So how do you want to come in? Well, truly speaking, madam, uh, your honour. What did you say? I said, truly speaking, uh, uh, things are really good. Let me don't say it in the negative side now. Uh, I tried to explain to her. I said, um, there's stuff I have tried to put together, but they're still putting me on hold. But I 
still believe that um, they should pay off. But I don't know when. It's the truth. You don't know how to raise it. Sorry? You don't know how to raise the money. That's the truth, man. That's what you said. Yes. That's the truth. Um, you know, uh, I find that very funny. Sorry? I find it funny. You know why? Um, generally in life, in most cases, you never have enough money mm -hmm. for everything that you want to do. Mm -hmm. But you have to set priority. Sure. And in this case, we are talking about your child. And she's in her final year. And if out of all this that she has expended, she's coming to you for the first time to ask for assistance towards the school fees, I would love to believe that she's actually been pushed to the wall and she can't really source money elsewhere. It's um, when it comes to parenthood, <laughs> it's not always that easy. No. We have instances where parents, they sell personal effects just to make sure that the child stays in school. And I'm coming back to your chin. <laughs> you are laughing too. Because at times, you know, you still have all these things on. You know, you might have some. You see, when you train a child, you reap it. Sure. Because you are giving the child a good balance and a good takeoff in mm -hmm. life to compete with others. Mm -hmm. So you really have to work around it. You know, the way it is now, I know I claim she has a total bill of over 3 million naira. I can't say go and bring the 3 million naira. You don't have a job right now. But you can't still tell me that in the past 13 years, you've not earned income. Am I lying? Sure. You've earned income. And over time, I'm sure if you push hard enough, you could be able to raise. You have to make it a priority. Is your child. Of course. That's just the bottom line. Of course. Yeah. Is your child. And we're talking about final year. And you, you just have to look at it. If she has kept up with the payments, she never disturbed you. Has she ever come to you before? No. Really. No. So if she's coming now, what do you think is happening on her end? No, I know her. She's, uh, she's a very considerate person. I know her very well. Yeah, so. so that says a lot. So that's the time. This is the time now for you to wear the trouser mm. as a man. Do you understand me? Very well. Uh, this is the time to wear the trouser as a man. You have to go and source the 754,000 naira to make sure your child completes her education in secondary school. And she mentioned something else about her surgery. Yes. So I like to believe that if she doesn't have that health challenge right now, she probably won't even run to you. He knows that. He knows that. He knows that as well. So it's something the two of you have to work on. You said it. You said you are best of friends. Is that correct? You relate very well. So it's easy for you to discuss. So you have to. Do you understand? I do my best. You're a man. Of course. She, she too. She has, she's been supportive. You agree with me on that? Of course. All right, then. After the break, George Fumi rules. Judgment for the plaintiff, Mojisola Fami Hassan, for the sum of 754,000 naira. Judgment for the plaintiff. Have you been cheated or have a dispute and want justice? Don't take laws into your hands. 
Log on to www.thejusticecourt.com and submit your case.